Hello everyone, it's of course me Dan here back again with another video and today is going to be a review of a game that I've been waiting for for so long and I've just been so utterly excited for and that is The Last of Us Part 2. Probably one of the most controversial games to come out in recent memory in terms of people's opinions about it. I beat the game about a week or so ago. I've waited a while to do a review for it mainly because I wanted to settle my mind on a few things that I was unsure about and overall just to kind of let the hype sink down and let me think realistically about my opinions about the game. So we of course here doing the review for it. I will quickly mention just beforehand, this is going to be a spoiler review. I will be mentioning spoilers about the game. So if you have not beaten The Last of Us Part 2, please, please play it before coming on and watching the video. And I won't mention every single spoiler or plot detail within this review because I do have a spoiler cast hopefully coming up soon on the channel with a couple of friends of mine. So Fingers crossed that should happen, and so with that, you'll be able to get my proper in-depth thoughts on more of the plot points of the game. So, without the way, let's get into the story synopsis, and then we'll go into the positives and negatives with The Last of Us Part 2. So the story for this game takes place around about four to five years after the events of the original, where Joel and Ellie have now settled down in Jackson, in a settlement that Joel's brother Tommy had helped set up, as we saw during the first game. They've started to adapt to a normal life there, they've started to feel as if we can actually get to a sense of normality, but that all comes crashing down when a group of WLF members manage to get near the Jackson border and end up killing Joel in a brutal and savage attack. And this traumatizes Ellie, who was present at this event, and it messes with her to the point where she feels like she can't move on from this, and so decides to seek revenge against every single member of that WLF group that was present at Joel's murder. And this takes her all the way to Seattle, with a couple of friends joining her along the way, as she takes out every single member of the group one by one. So starting off with the positives for this game, and this is probably going to be the most controversial, or one of the most controversial positives of the game. I actually did like the story here. I actually thought that the story was very, very good in my opinion. Now, I know this has made a lot of uh, rounds online because of the fact that the story very much goes in a lot of places that people weren't expecting, but overall for the narrative, I did quite enjoy it. And I did enjoy the direction that they ended up taking with this game. Again, it, I'm gonna be freely admitted with this. It's not the direction I would have taken or I would have imagined Naughty Dog to take. But ultimately, I did like the direction they went in, and it got some really interesting themes and character motifs and storylines out of it. So I did overall really like the overarching story. There are some issues that I do have with it, which I will explain in my negatives. But for the most part, I think the actual story was very good. In particular, parts of it that I really liked were the themes that the game addresses. I loved the idea of having this story that really kind of transitions between three themes throughout its three-act structure, because when you start up the game, it's very much about the theme of revenge and vengeance. And then as you kind of get into the second act of the game, it's kind of about the cycle of violence and what that does to a person and how to break it and how to redeem yourself and to get out of that. And then kind of the final act of the game ultimately reveals what I consider to be the actual overall theme of the game, which is forgiveness. And those three themes and the way they play out throughout the entire story I thought was so brilliantly well done and the way that they were executed with the main characters and with the stories throughout the game I thought in my opinion were brilliant. I'd be pretty damn remiss if I didn't mention about Joel because of course everyone pretty much knows by this point Joel dies within the first two hours of the game and take it from me I was shocked when this happened because I was not spoiled for The Last of Us Part 2 going into it. I did my absolute best to stay away from any spoilers possible and thankfully, I managed to go into the game completely clean. And so when this moment happened, I was completely and utterly shocked. And I didn't really know how to feel because I was kind of upset. But I wanted to see how the game would justify killing off Joel. And whether they would still try to progress his character in any way through flashbacks. Which is absolutely what they did. And I actually ended up coming to really like what they did with Joel. Again, it's not in a way that I would have done it. But in my opinion, it, it worked for me. It worked in satisfying me. It was just in a completely different way to what I expected, but it didn't bother me at all. And I think they do Joel justice in this game for me personally. I know other people have had conversations about 
the manner in which he dies and that it feels out of character. This character has changed within five years. You would expect that. You would expect with him being in this settlement with this very peaceful environment that Joel would let his guard down. So for me, I didn't have as much of an issue with his death. It made sense to me personally. And I think there are other plot holes or plot point issues that for me were far more critical for me than the circumstances around how Joel died. And I ultimately do think they did a good job of Joel in this game. And particularly with his flashback sequences with Ellie, they were probably some of the best moments of the whole game. I just really liked having the interactions between the two of them. I know people have said since, oh, this is what the game could have been. But again, for me, I like the direction they took with the story anyway. It was just that having those moments between the two were just kind of a cherry on top. There's just so many great scenes between them to list off. I mean, you've got the whole birthday scene where they go to the museum together. Then you've got the one where they go into the hotel and they fight the bloater. It really gave me like proper vibes of the first game. And then you've got the scene where Joel admits to Ellie that he lied about the fireflies. And then the brilliant end scene of the game, which I'll get onto later but I really did enjoy what they did with Joel and the way they used him throughout the game. I also really liked Ellie's story in this game as well of her going on this journey and us being completely invested in it from the beginning because we see Abby kill Joel and from that up point onwards it just makes the audience immediately get onto Ellie's side of yes we've got to take all these guys down but then as you progress throughout the game you slowly begin to realize that not only do you question what Ellie is doing, you also begin to see that Ellie is really acting out of character because she's basically trying to emulate Joel. There's a brilliant scene in her section of the story where she tries to copy the same torture technique that Joel uses, except she's just not as successful because at the end of the day, she's not Joel. And I know people have said, oh, this is out of character for her. I think that's the main point. That's what you're supposed to get out of it, that this journey and this path to revenge is costing her every bit of the innocence that she had when we saw her in that first game. Ashley Johnson was fantastic. This is easily like some of the best stuff she's ever done. Like she really brought her A game to this performance and I really enjoyed her in the game. And I just really like it because of course with Ellie being kind of the main playable character, you really have to try and get on her side and really get invested with her character because in the first game, she was just an NPC and you played as her for about what, 10% of the first game. Whereas in here, she really is kind of like the main playable character and I thought they did a really good job with her story-wise and also getting us invested with her character from the onset in terms of agreeing with her goals and her motives to go after the WLF. All right, let's talk about Abby because this is, again, another very controversial element of the game. Like, if Joel's death is, like, the main complaint of this game, then Abby is very much number two. She's very much the kind of the next most controversial thing. So when I first got introduced to a character when she killed Joel, I was like everybody else. I was just like, yep, fuck this character. We're going to go kill her, give her a nice, slow, painful death. And then as we go through the game, I'm thinking, you know, where is she? Where is she running off to? And then you end up with that midway point in the game where she breaks into the theater. You're thinking, oh God, there's going to be like this amazing confrontation. And then the game pulls a fast one on you and makes you basically reset again and play as Abby. And I remember my exact reaction at that point being, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> because I was the last thing I expected. Because again, I wasn't spoiled for anything going into this game. I didn't know anything about Abby really and I didn't know certainly that you were going to play as her for half the game. It was a turn that I wasn't expecting and took me a while to warm to but at the end of the day I really liked this decision by them to make us understand what journey Abby is going on because in the game Ellie's very much on the journey of revenge but in with Abby's journey we kind of see the aftermath of what Ellie could be on if she does go through with her action of killing Abby because we learn throughout the game that she is actually the daughter of the doctor that kill in the first game to get to Ellie. You know, that guy that you either shoot or you stab in the neck with a shiv. Really linking back to the theme of the cycle of violence, you know. Joel killed her dad and so she spends these four to five years literally dedicating nothing but all of her time and resources to getting revenge on Joel. And then once she does that, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't fix anything for her. You know, her relationships with everyone is so broken because they just see her as this unrelenting killer. She still has nightmares about her dad. She can't get them out of her head. She's still stuck with this boring, mundane job that you can just tell she isn't interested in. And so when she meets the characters of Yara and Lev through the story, it kind of acts as her, what she believes is her pathway to redemption. 
and I really loved that. Like I say, well, as soon as we get to the Yara and Lev stuff in Abby's story, that was really when it started to pick up for me, and I really started to enjoy it a lot more. And Abby as a character, I really did start to enjoy as we went through her section. Like I say, it did take me a while to warm to her, just because I really didn't know how to feel about it at the start. But like I say, as soon as we got to the Yara and Lev stuff, and it starts to challenge some of Abby's preconceived beliefs of the Seraphites, and what they are, and what they worship, and their beliefs... I really think that's when we start to see the best of Abby and I really liked seeing her throughout the entire game kind of change and evolve from this person who was just so steadfast on revenge to realizing that it didn't change anything and that breaking the cycle is what she should have done in the first place and it was just such a brilliant way to do it. And Laura Bailey was fantastic in this role. I really loved her throughout the entire game. She's been getting a lot of stick online just because, oh, you killed Joel, so people have been giving her shit for that. I think it's honestly pathetic. And then the whole argument about, oh, why is Abby so buff? I think it's there to demonstrate the fact that she spent so much time fixated on killing Joel that she basically built herself like a tank for the sole purpose of killing him. And then afterwards, it's just kind of this thing that just acts as a reminder of an event that didn't change anything for her. So I really understood why they did that. And uh, yeah, I didn't really have a problem with that. And again, by the end of the game, I really liked Abiella's character. I didn't like her more than Ellie. I've seen some people say that. I personally still preferred Ellie more to Abby. But by the end of the game, I think the aim of, with Naughty Dog wasn't for us to like Abby, but for us to understand Abby. And if that's the case, then they definitely succeeded with that. The supporting characters in the game as well are also really good in my opinion. Of course, on Ellie's side of the story, the, the main two ones you've got the new characters introduced are Dina and Jessie. Uh, Dina was one that I really quite liked. I wasn't sure how to feel about her because in the E3 trailer or the gameplay snippet we got with her and Ellie in that little bar, I didn't really know how to feel about Dina as a character, but in the actual game, I really liked her, and I really liked her relationship with Ellie. You really brought into it, and you really wanted to see these two have a happy ending, and I thought just her attitude and her back and forth with Ellie was really good. I really loved Dina throughout the game. There is one plot point revelation about her character that did piss me off, which, again, I will address in the negatives, but apart from that, I really love Dina. Jesse, again, was also very good. He didn't get as much screen time as Dina because he doesn't really play a, as big a role until you get into the like the second half of Ellie's first part of the story. But I really like Jesse and I liked his relationship with Ellie and Dina because he kind of acts as a third wheel in that relationship. So I really like kind of the back and forth that created. It got quite a few very funny moments throughout the game, but I really like Jesse overall. I really did get shocked when he died. You know, his death scene was easily one of the most shocking of the whole game because I just remember like getting to that midway point, having that really nice like talk with Jesse beforehand. And then, you know, you hear shit go down in the theater. You, you and Ellie run off together with Jesse. And then Jesse just gets fucking shot in the head <laughs> within an instant. Like, I just remember completely, like, losing it at that point. That was crazy. But, yeah, Jesse was a really good character. I really liked him. Tommy, as well, plays a bigger role in this game than he does in the first one. Even though a lot of it is unseen, I still really like what they did with Tommy. And I really liked how he kind of served, again, as kind of like this mirror to Ellie of this is what will happen to you if you don't let go of what happened to Joel. Because by the end of the game, you know, he goes through a lot of shit trying to, you know, get vengeance on Joel and he ends up, he loses his sight, he loses his ability to walk or, or his mobility in general. He ends up losing his relationship to Maria. He really does lose everything. And again, it kind of, again, holds up this mirror to Ellie and saying, look, if you want to keep on going through this with Joel, it will cost you everything. And then on Abby's side, of course, you got quite a few members of the WLF that we see. Uh, the, the favorite ones was definitely Manny. It was weird because when I first saw Manny, I was just like, oh, fuck this guy, you know, because the man's just spitting on Joel's grave. And I'm like, ugh, I don't know how to feel about this guy. But then as soon as you get to Abby's section, I really loved Manny. I loved him, you know, he was a really, really cool character. And again, a very, like, another big moment of the game is when he dies, you know, when Tommy goes after you and Abby during that sniping section which is easily one of my favorite parts of the whole game. And Manny is just like, you're trying to open this door with Manny, and then he turns back and just gets his brains blown out. And again, that was another death that completely <laughs> caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting it. But Manny was a character that I really liked in the game. I also really loved Owen as well. Owen was another one that I really loved on Abby's side of the story. I really loved kind of his thought process and the fact that unlike a lot of the WLF members, He's someone who's quite sympathetic. There's this whole storyline with him in the game about how they're going after out, out to kill some Seraphites and he has a moral dilemma because he sees this, you know, this old man who he's meant to kill and he just can't do it and he ends up killing one of his 
WLF members in order to save himself. And the voice actor for Owen Patrick Fewitt, I think, did a really good job. I've actually seen him on another TV show called uh, Outcast. He was on there as the lead character. Amazing show, go watch it. And yeah, he was amazing in this game. I really loved what he did with the character. And then easily my favorite two from Abby's side of the story were Yara and Lev. I loved their storyline and I just loved how they really brought a different insight to the Seraphites because you see them in tidbits before you meet Yara and Lev and you just think like these guys are fucked up. Like what they do is crazy. And you think everybody is like that. And then you meet Yara and Lev as these two people that are trying to get out of the Seraphites and they were brilliant characters i love that dynamic one another how their storyline very much it takes a real toll on abby and really ignites the change in her character i've just really loved them and on their storyline and how it ended you know going to their home on the seraphite island yeah just really great characters and i really enjoyed them and their role throughout the game the graphics as well in this game are stellar some of the best graphics on the ps4 i in fact i'd go as far as to argue these are the best graphics on the ps4 like these are honestly ridiculous, like we're getting to the end of the PS4 era, kind of like that time now where developers really know what they can get out of the system on the games and Naughty Dog have just mastered it. The game looks incredible, the tiny details, the facial animations in particular are the thing that really stood out to me. And yeah, this, the games graphic wise, perfect, can't say anything more. The gameplay as well is brilliant. This is easily the, the aspect of the game that I think was improved the most upon the original. Even though this is certainly a refinement of the first game's mechanics, there's enough new things in here that really help to make it stand out. The big two for me was the prone and the dodge mechanics. The prone mechanic, really good because it means you can now hide in grass and you know, have at least a bit more cover from your enemies. And it really helps because of the foliage throughout the game and the amount of enemies you can have on screen. It was a really useful mechanic to have. And the dodge, it really makes combat and especially close quarters combat, a more viable option because rather than just standing there and being killed, you know, you can actually use the added agility that Ellie and Abby have in the game to your advantage, which I thought was awesome because, it, like I say, in the first game, if you went to a melee combat, you were basically fucked because you were going to get damaged. Whereas with here, it's kind of a risk and reward because if you're good at dodging, then you can basically evade that risk completely. And so I really love that feature in the game. They're definitely the two biggest things that I love, like in terms of the new additions for the game. Like, they're the kind of additions where if I go back to the first game and play it, it's going to be quite hard to do so without having the dodge or the pro mechanic there. I love the heaviness of the guns. When you shoot a gun, you really feel the impact. I know I've seen some people say that they don't like that aspect about the gameplay, but I've always enjoyed it. I've always really enjoyed you know, games that kind of go from making you feel invincible to really putting you back down to earth, making you realize, you know, you are fucked completely <laughs> because you are not Nathan Drake in this game at all. Like, you will be put under scenarios where you're like, shit, I've got no ammunition, no supplies, what the fuck do I do? And I like that. I like that the game puts you in those kind of scenarios where you do have to make it up on the spot. And I love the introduction of the dogs as well because they added a new mechanic because they can now scent your trail that you leave behind so you have to think about them as well it was very painful to kill the dogs but it was all for the greater course speaking about gameplay as well the enemies in this game are also far better than they were in the first game not just in terms of the variety but also the ai as well the human ai are so much more intelligent the way that they communicate and try to flank you it's just far better than it was in that original game because another minor criticism people had with the part one was oh the ai wasn't that impressive in this game the ai are really smart and especially because i played on the higher difficulties they really do outthink you a lot of the times and you're always on your toes thinking of ways to outdo them and i like how the different factions that you go up against all act differently with the wlf they're very militaristic in how they operate the full body armor got loads of powerful weapons with the seraphites all they do is communicate through whistling and they primarily use stealth weapons those guys really freaked me out because all you could just hear is whistling left right and center you got no idea what they're talking about it's just whistling and i just love them as enemies and then you of course had the rattlers which you encounter at the end of the game who i also really liked and they had their own ways of coordinating tactics with one another it was just nice to see that kind of uniqueness in between all the factions and how they operated and for the infected really good in this game again like kind of improve upon the infected from the first game especially the runners the runners are far more effective 
here because there's massive groups of them. They're very aggressive towards you. The Stalkers, who were probably my favorite new enemies in the whole game, they really, really piss me off because they don't show on your listen mode and they just appear out of nowhere. Like, they can just be stuck to walls and then come out at you. It was a... Uh, very tricky to get past them the shambles were cool as well because they kind of act as kind of this immediate area threat where they're just these big puff balls and as soon as they go towards you they can just explode gas they were really cool really different enemy to challenge with and then of course you've got the rat king that shows up during abby's part of the story and when that thing showed up honestly i jumped out of my seat it just gave me full-on nightmares of mr x from resident evil 2 because my good god, I remember looking at that thing thinking, how on earth do I beat this thing? And the boss battle against that, again, because I played on hard difficulty, was actually quite challenging and uh, phew, edge of seat stuff. Just in general, the gameplay for this game was absolutely fantastic and nothing I can fault about the gameplay at all. It was easily one of my favourite aspects of the whole game. And the last thing I'm going to mention here is I really like the world building of part two. I loved going to Seattle and not just that, but also seeing all these new places that we go to and go into its different areas, but also all the different factions that we get to meet because of course you've got the WLF who are there, but you also see multiple sides to them in terms of these are actual real people that are here, not just henchman number one or henchman number two. I really like seeing that, the kind of different aspects to do with WLF. And then you've got the Seraphites where you kind of see them as these religious nut jobs. But then once you meet Yara and Lev, you really get an understanding as to what they are and that they're not really a group that was built upon violence. They just evolved into this because idiots decided to change their philosophy and their beliefs and i really loved seeing that and then of course very late on in the game during the epilogue section what i like to call it you get the the rattlers as well and i just really liked how the game really did a good job of establishing all these other groups that existed but also going that extra mile to go a bit more in depth into them and how they work and the the inner goings on that go in between all these groups, which I thought was a really interesting aspect. And my final positive I'm going to have with this game is the ending. I really like the way this game wrapped everything up story-wise. It was a really good way to end the game, in my opinion. And very much like the first game, if they were to not make a sequel after this, I would be completely content and happy with the way that they ended it. The whole segment away, you know, with the epilogue when they go to Santa Barbara, I do have some minor issues with it in terms of how it relates to the whole game, which I'll address again in the negatives. But in terms of its section itself and how it ends, I really loved it. Concluding that story between Ellie and Abby and the whole cycle of violence and revenge and forgiveness themes and how they all come together was brilliant. It also has probably my favorite scene in the whole game between Ellie and Joel, that final flashback where initially in the game you're led to believe, oh shit, you know, she wants to kill Abby because she never got the chance to forgive Joel, but then you realize that the final conversation that her and Joel had was actually one where she wanted to start to forgive him. And that scene is, like I say, the best scene of the whole game. I was in absolute tears when that scene happened. I mean, I was crying multiple times throughout this game. Like I say, Joel's death made me cry. All the flashback sequences made me cry. This scene broke me completely, absolutely destroyed me. I can't remember the last time I cried this hard in any piece of media ever. It was ridiculous, and that scene just floored me emotionally. And like I said, the acting between Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson in that scene was pitch perfect. It was fantastic. And I just loved the way the game ended it with Ellie finally realizing that to really get over what happened couldn't just go after abby and an act of revenge and continue that cycle she had to forgive her because if she could forgive joel for what he did to her then ultimately she had to do the same thing with abby it's just it takes her everything and costs her everything to get to that point and it's a very bittersweet ending but it's very reminiscent to what of course what we got in the first game which i really enjoyed and like i say if they never made a last of us part three i would be completely fine with the way they ended it here now, despite all my praises for The Last of Us Part 2, there are a few negatives that I do have with this game, unfortunately, because this is not perfect game. And getting this out of the way, I don't think it's as good as Part 1, mainly because I just can't really find any flaws with Part 1. I really enjoyed that game. Whereas with Part 2, there were a few issues that I unfortunately did have with the story. The main issue I had for me was the pacing. I thought that there was quite a few segments where I just felt the pacing was just very slow. Not a lot was really happening to progress the story outside of gameplay sequences, which were fun of themselves, but I didn't really feel like there was enough actually happening to drive the story forward, which annoyed me a little bit. I think the main issues with the pacing-wise for me was when 
you initially take over as Abby because the game really ramps up towards this conclusion and then all of a sudden we do a restart which I liked in terms of developing Abby's character but in terms of an actual overall narrative of the game it really does put the story on standstill for a good two hours which I just really found myself really frustrated by. Maybe it would have been better had they maybe intercut sections with you playing as Abby and then playing as Ellie. Maybe that would have resolved it, but I think the way that they ended up doing it, it did hurt the game in terms of its pacing. And then the other one I have is the, the epilogue at the end of the game. While I do enjoy how it wraps up the themes, I do feel like it was a tad bit unnecessary to jump that far ahead. That, that just felt a little bit iffy to me but the but i ended up liking it a bit more because of the way that it really did a good job of resolving that that conflict and all of the story's themes another thing i will say about the pacing with this game is that it does jump around a lot in time because whereas the first game was very straightforward in terms of how it took place it was all in chronological order we were always moving forward with this game there are quite a few sequences where we jump back in time to flashbacks of a character's past and some of them, like I say, worked really well. I enjoyed all of Ellie's flashbacks and I thought they worked really well because they really helped to shape the dynamic between her and Joel. Whereas I felt like Abby's flashback sequences, while I think they did their job in terms of story-wise, I didn't really enjoy playing them and I found them a little bit tedious and a bit boring in my opinion. And relating on to the pacing, I will say as well, the game is a little bit too long for me personally. On my first playthrough, it took me around about, I believe, 26 hours to beat the game. And I do feel that the game could have been trimmed down in length. I probably would have done about five hours off it. And I think that would have made it a lot more manageable and a lot easier to get through. And a lot of people that I've spoken to as well agree with me that they love the game, but it should have been a bit shorter. I know that some people have the same issue with Uncharted 4 saying that game was too long, but I never had a problem with that game's pacing. Here, if, if for me, oh, I enjoyed it, but there was definitely a few segments, like I say, with pacing wise, it really hurt. And also, I just felt like there was quite a few scenes where I was just kind of thinking to myself, yeah, the game should wrap around about here, but it didn't. It went on for a bit longer. Nothing that completely destroyed the game for me, but I definitely got to a few sequences where I thought, yeah, the game could have ended a bit sooner than now. Another criticism that I do have with the game as well is that there was a few side characters in the story that I unfortunately felt were a little bit underdeveloped or just completely wasted to the wayside. A lot of the characters that tend to fall into this category show up in Abby's side of the story because while she has some great characters and side characters with her, I do feel like there was a lot of characters that just weren't given enough to do. The big ones for me were Nora in particular. I felt like they could have done a lot more with her because when you see her during the Ellie segment, you're supposed to, I guess, feel some sort of sympathy for the fact of how brutally you take her down as Ellie, that I thought the game could have maybe done something with her in the Abby segment to maybe build a bit of sympathy for her character so that we, in turn, feel bad for the, how brutally we killed her off in Ellie's side. That doesn't really happen here, and we don't really get as much development with the cast of characters that joined Abby on a quest to kill Joel at the start of the game, which I guess I would have liked to have seen more of, but it wasn't a necessity, but she was one of the characters that I felt like we could have had a little bit more with. Mel as well was another one that I just didn't particularly like. I understood why she was put in the story and her place there was to basically just call Abby out on her bullshit and how everyone perceives her after what she did to Joel and how brutally she killed him. I get why she's there, but I feel like the way they used her was very annoying. Pain in the arse the entire way through the game, but in a negative way. And also, why is she out on the field when she's pregnant? I never really enjoyed her character in the game, but the big one for me was the leader of the WLF, Isaac. What was the point of this character? I honestly felt like you could have removed him from the game and nothing would have changed. We spend so much time building up to him in Ellie's story. We see notes about him. You hear WLF members before you kill them mentioning about Isaac and you think to yourself, right, he's this big figure. You know, are we going to see him? And then we see him for two scenes, his introductory scene and his final scene where he gets killed off. I genuinely think he was a waste of a character. It's almost as if they needed kind of this small villain that they needed for a certain section of the story. Kind of like David, how David was a villain for the winter section of the first game. And it was almost as if they wanted to do the same thing here with Isaac, except they just did nothing with him. He probably has about five minutes of screen time in the whole game, and it just felt so undercooked. And I think the part of the reason for this might have been because of the fact they casted Jeffrey Wright in the role. Because if you don't know, Jeffrey Wright is a 
humongous actor and he's in a lot of stuff and I reckon they probably had more stuff planned with Isaac but because they got Jeffrey Wright in and he was might have been busy with other projects maybe that's why Isaac didn't have as big a role in the game but even with that I just don't think they did enough with his character and he felt very inconsequential I didn't really find him very interesting or his motive to be particularly intriguing at all just a very much a waste of a character in my opinion and a character that I honestly think could have been cut out of the game and probably wouldn't have made much of a difference at all. On the final set of negatives I've got here, it's just a lot of questionable decisions that happened throughout the game that I wasn't a big fan of. Uh, the big two that stick out to me, or three technically, but I guess two of them revolve around the same scenario, is uh, the pregnancies in this game. So we find out in the game that Dina is pregnant. Uh, this didn't make sense to me because how has Dina been able to do all the things that she did if she's been carrying a kid? I'm sorry, I'm not buying that at all. That felt like a little bit of a silly revelation to me. And then that kind of extends to Mel as well. You know, it's one of the key plot points when Ellie kills her and she realizes she's pregnant. Yet when we go into Abby's section, She's going out into the field, even though you can clearly tell she's well into her pregnancy. That just felt a bit stupid to me why they had that. That just felt so dumb in my opinion. Just from a concept and how it plans out in game, like the fact she's like vaulting over cover and smacking her stomach against walls and surfaces. Yeah, it's just, no, it's not particularly a good idea in my opinion. And the other one was the motif for why Abby spares Dina when we get to that section in the game where we have that fight in the theater. I never really fully bought into Abby letting Dina live. I understand why Ellie ends up letting Abby live at the very end of the game. That was made perfect sense to me. I thought that was very well shown and developed throughout the game. However, I don't understand why Abby let Dina survive. I mean, there's the revelation that she's pregnant, but Ellie just killed her boyfriend and her boyfriend's current girlfriend who was pregnant. I just never really understood it. And even when Lev shows up and like, and calls Abby's name out to her, I didn't really buy into it. And I just, I wish it had been explained a little bit better because even on my second playthrough, I tried to look for maybe dialogue that further explained that, but I never really found it within the game or at least it didn't really fix that criticism that I had for me personally and yeah there's just a couple of decisions like that just narrative wise that just felt a bit odd or just moments that I don't think were explained as well as they could have been. Putting all that aside though, I really enjoyed The Last of Us Part 2. For me, it was a worthy sequel to the original game, and whilst I don't think it is quite as good as the first game, given that the first game is my favourite game of all time, and it was just such a hugely important game for me, I still very much enjoyed The Last of Us Part 2. I think it's got overall a really good story for the most part. I really liked a lot of the new characters that we brought in. The existing characters from the first game I thought were developed very well. I loved the gameplay in this, probably the biggest upgrade in, for me personally. The graphics were amazing, I loved the world building, and it ended on a note where even if we don't get a part 3, I'd be more with contempt of this being the concluding part of the story. So with all that being said, I'm going to give The Last of Us Part 2 the score of a 9 out of 10. I know some people won't agree with that, but again, this is just my opinion. I personally dug the game. I enjoyed what I got out of it, and it's a very strong way to close out the PS4, in my opinion, with one of the best exclusives that it has to offer. So thank you very much for watching my review on The Last of Us Part 2. I know this has been an incredibly long video, so I really do appreciate you sticking around and hearing everything I have to say about the game. Of course, let me know in the comment section down below your opinions on The Last of Us Part 2. Try and please be civil about it, because I don't want a war happening in the comment section. So yeah, thanks for watching. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I hope to see you all again next time. I'll see you around. Yep. <clears throat>